Where is he? Where have you been? It's almost time to go on air. Oh, sorry, but there's this man with a van unloading a pile of old junk, you see. So old I... junk? Yeah. That old junk of valuable antiques. Oh. We're doing a show on the care and preservation of family heirlooms. Heirlooms? Yeah, heirlooms are things that are handed down through families from generation to generation. Oh, you mean like noses? Yeah, you've got it. Right. Do noses run in your family? Only in the winter, when it gets a bit cold, they run then. Oh. Let's get on with it. Today's programme is all about antiques. Whether you have china, paintings or furniture, it's well worth taking good care of them so they preserve their value. Hey, now, I had an antique. Did you? Yeah. What was it? Well, I'm not really sure, but every time the doorbell rang, mm -hmm. my mum shouted, it's your aunt. And I said, me antique. Anti <laughs> no, not that kind of antique. Oh. An antique is very valuable. Mm -hmm. Usually something that's been kicking around for years. Just like me auntie. Not like your auntie. Or Ozzy Ardiles. <laughs> Ozzy Ardiles. <laughs> Oh, your deal is. Yeah, well, he's been kicking around for years, hasn't he? Plays football for Spurs. No, look, just go to the back door and bring in that pile of old junk. You mean the antiques? I know it's antiques, yes. Oh. Just go and fetch them and be very careful. Mm -hmm. We told Dan we'd pay for any breakages. Y Who's Dan? Dan McCann. Dan McCann? The man in the van. Oh, you told Dan McCann, the man in the van, we'd pay for any breakages? That's right, you've got it. Well, in that case, I'll be careful. Well... Now we go out and about to see just what is and is not worth collecting. Must get this ready for Paul. Just a minute. I shouldn't be there. That's it. Right. Now, one way of buying antiques is to go to a shop that sells them such as this. For instance, look at this. As you can see, 400 years old. You'd never think so to look at it, though, would you? You'd swear it was brand new. Look at the finish on that. Hey, just goes to show, all those years ago, they knew how to make things to last. If you take good care of them, they'll last you for years. Marvellous, that. Since the dawn of civilization, man has left evidence of his life behind him. Now, we're here in the park to look for such evidence. Hey, Barry. What? This is the kind of thing we're looking for. Roman coins. Great. Something of the like. You look after those while I go and look for some more. Hey, I'll put them somewhere safe. to the studio. And now to paintings. Look at this. Beautiful. Hey, have you ever seen a Leonardo cartoon? No, but I've seen a Tom and Jerry. There was one on last night. Did you see it? I did. It was good. Wasn't it great? Not that kind of cartoon. Oh. Leonardo da Vinci. He was a great Italian painter. Oh, a great Italian painter. He Mama painted Lea. this. He painted this. Did he? It's the Mona Lisa. Oh. How long did it take him to do it? Oh, um, at least a fortnight. No wonder she was a mourner if she had to sit still for a fortnight. I'll have you know, it was for works like this that he was hung in the Louvre. Was he? Mm. I don't think it's that bad. Listen, right. you're obviously no art lover. Oh. Just give me a hand taking these antiques into the studio. Oh. I'll take this one, you bring the rest. Right. Oh, and remind me. Remind me to tell Dan we didn't break that. Right. Right. I... Oh. 
Oh. Oh. In a short while, we'll be taking a look at some more objects of interest. But first of all... Excuse me, where do you want this? Oh, put it on here, and right. you can put the other one over here. The... That's what say. other one? Well, the matching one. It's one of two pieces. It's one of 42 pieces. 42 pieces? Yeah. You haven't damaged it, have you? No, I haven't damaged it. Oh. I broke it. Broke it? Yeah. Do you know that was over 2,000 years old? Oh, thank heaven for that. I thought you were going to say it was a new one. I can pop out and get another one. No, 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 look, look. I've got an idea. We'll have to fix that one. Have oh. you got any glue? No, but I've got some sticky tape. That'll have to do. Do the best you can and stick it together. OK. Uh, well, uh, we've had a look at one great masterpiece by Leonardo da Vinci. Let's take a look at another one. Armchair theatre. Hi, yeah, this is the nanny. Well, that's what we call the landing stage. It's where we get the ferry to cross the river. You see our place here, Liverpool, that's by the River Mersey. And if you want to go to Birkenhead, that, that's over there, well, you can take the Lecky, that's the underground electric railway, but I always go by ferry. You see, when I was a kid, this river was crowded with ships. There was great big ones sailing to all sorts of places all over the world. But now there's only these ferries, and, of course, the boats that go to the Isle of Man and to Ireland. And there used to be this other ship, bigger than that one there. It was called the St Tudno. It used to go to a place called Clandidno in Wales. It's a seaside place, and people used to go for day trips. Now, I'll never forget a story I heard. There was this lad named Nash. His real name was Ignatius, but we called him Nash for short. Anyway, Nash and Man was always doing these competitions in the Echo. That's our Liverpool paper and she won these tickets for a day trip on the St Tudno to this place in Wales. Well, she said, I'm not going on any boat, it'll sink. So Nash and his dad could go instead. And then there was this spare ticket. So Nash said, can my mate Jimmy go? She said, yeah, if he wants. So the great day came, and Nash and his dad and Jimmy all got down to the pierhead dead early. And straight away, Nash's dad got himself a chair on deck and he sat down. I'm not moving about, he said. But what he didn't say was that he was terrified of being seasick. I'm staying put and I'm not moving about. So he's off sailing down the river and the boat's as steady as Lime Street Station. But he's convinced he's going to be seasick. And he got himself a knotted anky, which he put on his head taking no chances. The sun just might come out and I don't want to get sunstroke. That can make you seasick as well. And there's this other fella sitting near him and he hears what Nash's dad's saying and leans over to speak to him. There's only one way to stop it coming up. There is. There is. What's that then? You've got to keep it going down. There's only one way to stop being seasick. You've got to keep on eating. Keep on eating, said Nash's dad. All the way to Wales. That's right. And then this fella gets up and goes off to the end of the boat. Now it's lucky because Nash's mum has done us all a picnic each, and she's got in a you know a, a thingy, a basket. So Nash's dad sits there and unpacks his picnic and sets it all out on his knees. I'll be all right now. So long as I keep getting it down, it won't come up. Well, that's what that fella says. And there he sits. In the way. I guess there's no tomorrow. And he felt really happy because he thought now there was no chance of him being seasick. Then, at that very moment... <laughs> he jumped up the chair like a rocket. Why did he do that? What did he do that for? He's got a right to that. That frightened me like that. What to do? What to do now? Where's our Nash? Find our Nash, Jimmy! So off Jimmy went round the boat to find Nash. Now, I don't know if I've told you this before, but Nash is a bit of a head case in some ways. He gets these ideas. One of his ideas is that he wants to be a famous goalie in football. And he's always exercising. You see, he's worried about his arms not being long enough to save the ball going into the net. So there's Nash on deck. He's doing exercise to lengthen his arms. And he's got his picnic basket and he's swirling it round and round and round. And he's doing it so fast that the picnic stays in the basket. Nash! shouted Jimmy. 
Nash! It wasn't his fault Nash stopped like he did. But he stood there, watching his cheese butties floating back to Liverpool. Then Jimmy told Nash that his dad wanted him. So when he got back to where Nash's dad was still sitting in his chair, they couldn't tell him what had really happened to Nash's picnic. So Nash said that he'd eaten it. You've eaten them? What am I going to do the rest of the way? Jimmy, if you've eaten our Nash's sandwiches, you're going to have to give me yours. Jimmy didn't like that. He was going to be hungry. But then he thought, well, they gave me the free ticket for the trip. So he handed over his picnic. So Jimmy and Nash picked up the basket and went out along the ship. They found a little shop that sold ice cream and crisps. So they pulled together all the money that they had between them and bought one packet of crisps and one cornet. How long does it take to get to Wales, mate? Nash said to one of the sailors. Two hours, kiddo. Then Nash saw an old lady at the back of the boat. She had a great big bag of sliced bread and she was tossing it to the seagulls. And she was really good at it. She would have made a great frisbee player. So Nash walked up to her, talked to her, and he looked at her dead sad. Jimmy couldn't see what Nash was saying to the old lady, but she was pointing at him. She told Nash he was a good boy and patted him on the head and gave him the packet of sliced bread. She walked past Jimmy and muttered, what a shame, poor little lad. Jimmy was about to say something when Nash kicked him off in the ankle and dragged him towards his dad. Where have you been? I've finished it already. And you know the man said I've got to keep it going down. So he took the bread off Nash and he started on it. Each piece seems to take a long time to chew. But I kept him quiet, all right. In fact, they kept him quiet all the way to Wales. By the time they got there, he looked really ill. Hey, Nash, said Jimmy. Your dad doesn't half look green. It's all right, said Nash. He's not half as green as that bread was. He came back by train. How's it going? Oh, great. Good. When I finish with it, you'll never know it's been broken. Guarantee it? Yes, guarantee it. Good. Now, I'm going to do a piece on cleaning oil paintings next. Oh, yes. Yeah, there should be a booklet of instructions around here somewhere. You haven't seen it, have you? Uh, no, I've not seen it, no. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, if you find it, bring it to me. I've got to go back to the chair. OK, then. Oh. Oh. Right. You may have noticed that many old paintings are very, very dark. Uh, this is due to dust and dirt coming onto the painting, which from time to time needs cleaning off. And I'm just about to show you just how to do this. With the aid of this pamphlet. <laughs> Good. Hey, can I help? Yeah, I tell you what, what, you can do the cleaning while I read the instructions. Oh, I can do that, all right. Good. Where's the painting? Over there. All oh, right. Shall I go now, then? Yeah, you go and follow my instructions closely. Right. Right. Ready? Fine. Have you got everything? Everything, yes. Good. Well, to start with, you need a special cleaning solution called X24-73P. Right. And some light cleaning material. Are we going to clean the lights as well, then? No, just listen. Oh, OK. So, Dip the light cleaning material into the X24-73P and start cleaning the picture. You must use this very sparingly. Oh. And always remember, start at the bottom. When you have tried a small piece of the picture, you can then... Psst, psst. What happens if you start at the top? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Ah, yeah. If you happen to start at the top of the picture, the solution can run down and strip off the paint. This will ruin it completely. You did start at the bottom, didn't you? Yeah, yes, yes, I start at the bottom, all right. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Right. Now, if you find that it's OK, you can carry on all over the surface with a gentle rubbing action. 
This will bring out the fine detail and use of light that the artist originally incorporated in his work. Brilliant. Hey, hey, what are you doing? It's a secret part of the process I can't let anyone see. Secret part? You've messed it up, haven't you? No, I haven't. I haven't messed it up. No, I haven't. Well, let's have a look then. Come on. In a minute. Never mind in a minute. Move these screens now. Finish! Right. <sighs> La-la! What's that? That's the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. He was a great Italian painter. Mona Lisa? It looks like a two-year-old's done it. Well, it was one of his early works. Early works. Mm. Well, let's find out more about Leonardo from our art expert, Simon Lovell. Leonardo da Vinci in art. You'd think by now they'd have learnt I'm a magician. However, this week, antiques. And Dan McGann, from his van, has come to my rescue with a, a whole host of antique magic props to show you. First one I'm particularly excited about. It's hallmarked on the back, made in Hong Kong. It's actually a magic tray designed for turning an English black dice into a Japanese yellow dice. Rather sneaky, that one. Very pleased. I'm not quite sure what this one does. It consists of a, a number of little wooden blocks, a blue one at the top of the white ones. Tube, obviously designed to cover it up, but as I'm not sure, I think we'll leave that one where it is just for the moment. This one, what a little belter. If we have a look inside, you can see it's a very old, very dramatically constructed little box. Beautiful woodwork, gilt edges, 1850s. Just doing a little bit of an Arthur Negus there. Again, I'm not quite sure what it's for, but if we close it up, we'll have a look in just a moment. Meanwhile, back at the tube, let's have a look. Hey, hey! The blue one's moved from the top down to the middle. However, that's the way the old-fashioned magicians would do it. A modern magician like me would merely snap his fingers over the top and take it all the way to the bottom. Hmm. Back at Dan's box. Has anything happened? Just have to point out the rather delicate gilting on the top there, actually. Let's... <laughs> I don't believe it. Inside the box, filling it up, we now have a common or garden house brick. I think I'll close up the box. All I need now, if I wait a few hours, is another 250 million more, and I've got enough for my own house. Back to the studio. Uh, welcome back. And now let's take a look at preserving things from the distant past. Fossils. Here. Yeah. Now, where do you want this? Shall I put it in the freezer? In the freezer? Yeah. That's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Is it? Yeah. I had a cat called Rex. It's a funny name for a cat. Yeah, it was nervous. Nervous? Nervous Rex. Nervous Rex. Look, that bone came from a dinosaur. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. It came from next door's dog. He was trying to bury it in the garden. Do you know how old it is? Yeah, it's 18 months old. It's only a puppy. Not that puppy, the dinosaur bone. Yes, just a minute. It's uh, mm -hmm. 2 million, 700,000 years and 20 minutes. How can you be that exact? Well, the label on it said 2 million, 700,000 years. Yeah, and what about the 20 minutes? It took me that long to get it off the dog. Give it here. I'll go and find him another one. <sighs> That's a wonderful fossil. Absolutely wonderful. Now, as promised earlier, let's take a look at the Ming Dynasty porcelain. Have you got it, Maddy? Yeah, here it is. <sighs> Where do you want it? Uh, well, you better put it over here. Over there, right. OK, yeah. then. Yeah, that's Just... that's <sighs> All right. Stand back now. I can't. Hey? It's stuck to me hand. Oh. Well, in that case, stand there and look decorative. Decorative? All right, just stand there. OK. Now, here we have a fine example of Ming Dynasty China. I love that programme. What? Dynasty. I watch it all the time. I like crystal the best. Is Ming... that where they get crystal glasses from? Ming Dynasty comes from China. No, it doesn't. It comes from Denver. I watch it all the time on the telly. No, uh, you can tell roughly the age of a piece by the marks on its bottom. Hey. Now, the... Oh, yeah, lots of old things have marks on the bottom. Do they? Yeah. Uh, these pieces vary from piece to piece and mark to mark. Now, what are you doing? When's your birthday? What's it to you? Never mind. Right. Now, if you take a close look at the vase, around the top, you'll... How can you see around the top of that one? Oh, sorry, sorry. We'll use this one over here. OK. Now... Oh, by the way, you can tell the good quality of a piece of china if you give it a ping, because the sound should be clear and sharp. Oh. Are you going to do it? Do what? Ping the ming? Yeah, yeah. Oh, go on, then. A quick... Demonstration. Have you done it? Yeah. Try a bit harder. I'll try again. 
Try this. Oh, right. Oh, oh. Well, uh, you could tell with the sound it made that it couldn't have been of very good quality anyway. Uh, so that's all we've got time for this week. So until we see you again soon, goodbye. Goodbye. What did you give me the hammer for? Well, you weren't hitting it hard enough, were you? Hard enough. Look, 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 look.